I would like to speak about collaboration um, because I think collaboration, so working together, is one of the most important future skills for sustainable action. So if we want to save the world, if we want to turn it around, we have to do it together. And the question, or my research question, is how? How can we do this? So my focus is the city. I'm an urban researcher, and I work at the interface between technology and cities. Um, how, can, how can we use data? digitized data to enable people to talk to each other about future city scenarios. So, and if, when you read my, my subtitle, there is this notion of trust in there, because I think that trust is one of the most important qualities for collaboration. So if you trust someone, then you can trust yourself, you feel safe, you can create, you can cross borders, and um, you can also share knowledge, but you can also share your vulnerabilities. And this is probably much more important in collaboration, in good trust-based collaboration. So, and it's interesting to see that technology very often uh, creates the opposite, more skepticism, fear of surveillance and uh, mistrust. And I would like to turn this around and speak about how we can set up trust-based collaboration with data. So, um, I would like to um, address two major challenges. One is democracy. Um, we all know that there is a very active civil society at the moment that is willing to co-design our society, also co-design our cities. Many dedicated people want to have a say, they want to have a stake. They perform their citizenship, not in a very aggressive way at the moment, in a very, very creative way. And I like this a lot, and I think we should take this good energy as a window of opportunity. On the other hand, we know that there is a lot of populism going on, a lot of populistic governments, right-wing parties are getting stronger. So the, the society seems to be dividing, so we live in bubbles, we don't speak to each other. And I think we really have to take care of our democracy. We have to find tools, we have to find spaces also to talk talk to each other, that society will not fall ap apart. Um, another, um, another challenge that I would like to mention is the city itself, because uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of big cities in the world, and cities have become big data producers. Cities are getting bigger and bigger, and they produce a lot of different data, like mobility data, health data, infrastructure data. We know a lot about cities. And uh, this is actually not new, because cities have always produced a lot of data. But what is really new, new is that we have more data than ever before, and we have a significant growth of linkage opportunities. So there are a lot of tech tools that give us the opportunity to connect data in very, very interesting ways. And I think it's a very um, crucial and very philosophical question that I ask myself very often at work. Are our brains really ready to deal with such a huge amount of data? Because I often realize that people are flooded by data, they are overwhelmed by data and they are like, Woo, there's so much data, what can I ask now? What is my question? And this is very interesting because I think we really have to, I think we have to learn to think with data for the future. And um, the question is, uh, how can we make those data accessible for people? Who owns the data? And also, how can cities stay as independent as possible um, in regard of this data issue? And they have to stay independent from very few big companies that, of course, want to keep the data and want to make business models out of it. But when you look at cities from a more global perspective, then you see that this is not always the case. So we also have a lot of cities um, that don't produce so much data. They are not big data producers. We miss a lot of data. There is a lack of data. Um, more than 20% of mankind lives in informal settlements. That means that they don't have the official right for the land they live on. And uh, when we come to such cities, we often realize that um, some data are very difficult to get. I give you an example when you want to do research about uh, violence against women in public space, for example, which is very often the case, unfortunately, it's very difficult to get that data because a lot of governments try to hide data and the victims them themselves, they, are, they feel ashamed of publishing those data. So there is a big disbalance between data we have, it's about mobility, infrastructure, so let's say the easy data, and social data. And I think social data is uh, much more important or as important as the other uh, qualities of data we have. I want to share some numbers with you. 
Um, we have a lot of big cities in the world, mega cities. This number is increasing. 80% um, of those cities are in the global south. So if we speak about city planning here from a European perspective, we speak about very, very tiny, well-organized well cities. If you really want to do metropolitan research, you have to go to the global south. Um, Nearly 50% of mankind has no access to the internet, so it's the half, um, half of the world. And 50% of inhabitants, and this is only an example, in Africa are younger than 19 years old. So a very, very, very young population. And also people who want to make their living, they are very, very tech affine. So this is also something that we have to take into account. And I think those numbers are quite extreme. So, um, when you look at cities uh, from the global perspective in regard of data challenges, then you see we have cities that produce a lot of data, so high-tech cities. Then we have cities with a significant lack of data. And then we also have cities and regions that have a lot of data, but those data are not connected to each other. And this is also a problem for us researchers and also for politicians. Then you cannot work. Um, cities cannot exchange their data. That doesn't make any sense. So what are the future risks? Uh, of course, there is, a, there is a strong digital divide going on in the world. Um, and this digital divide creates social inequity. And I really want to underline that social inequity is not only about um, health systems, food, poverty, water access. It's, it's also about data access. If you don't have data, if you don't have access to the data of your city, then it produces very, very quickly um, a harsh social inequity. Data is not used for public good. Um, I think it's very important that governances um, try to support their local digital management system. And we know that, especially in the Global South, a lot of local governments don't have the capacity to do this. And uh, the new, I call it digital colonialism, which means that high-tech cities um, or also camp companies create tech tools that they transfer to other cities. And they just can't use it because it doesn't make any sense for them. So what can we do? Um, I think to tackle those potential risks, we should make data accessible to people. And I believe that we should apply new data-based tools that help us um, to speak with each other, to talk to each other, and to collaborate and speak about all these risks that I mentioned before. In Hamburg, we have a lab. It's a city lab. It's a cooperation with MIT Media Lab in Boston, and it's already there for, I don't know, five years. And we have invented a lot of tools for collaboration, citizen engagement, and also stakeholder engagement. Because all this is not only about citizens, it's also about experts speaking to each other. And um, we, we invented a lot of like mapping-based, we call them city scopes. So they are interactive. You work with Lego bricks, with also analog material. And uh, we work with a lot of different people for different uh, topics. And I want to give you some best practice ideas very briefly. We did a project some years ago that called Finding Places. And this was this winter when so many refugees came to Germany. I think we all remember this. Also, ha Hamburg took uh, approximately 40,000 people. And it was not so much the number, it was the speed. People came very fast. And the city administration had to put all those people in tents. And then the mayor called me and he said, look, can we really, really quickly set up a citizen engagement process to speak to our citizens about how, how to distribute all those people? And then we set up a tool, which is a kind of city scope. We invited all the citizens from the city of Hamburg and discussed the whole summer with them where to put temporary um, accommodations for refugees. The citizens came up with a lot of ideas, and those ideas were evaluated by the city government, and then they started to build this, um, uh, this, this, this houses or this temporary accommodations. City engagement in the past looked like this. So it's, it was very analog. You know all this putting post-its to the wall, um, walking on, on maps like here. or uh, It's also very creative, but it was not digitized at all. Um, we now do it like this in Hamburg. This is the digital participation tool, a collaboration with the Authority of Housing and our state uh, data agency. So if people um, want to 
speak with the government about city development. They can use this tool. They can comment on uh, residential housing. They can comment on new ways of mobility. They can comment on social issues, different tools, and this is quite uh, successful. It's interesting that a lot of people take um, um, participate in such processes, and the comments are very, very constructive. I, I remember when we started this, we were afraid of getting de uh, of getting like uh, bashing uh, comments or things like this, and it really doesn't happen. Happen people. People are very responsible. They feel responsible for the city, and they really want to contribute. This is another tool which is about the social infrastructure of the city. So also, the, our current mayor wanted to know how can we make, uh, how can we develop this in a good way. And this is uh, another tool which is more, more creative. We invented this with designers and artists. So it's an augmented reality tool about a park. It's a quite, quite green, a big green area in Hamburg. And you can put on the glasses and you can really design the park, like putting um, flowers, trees, also animals in the park pathways. So people can really co-design. Going back to the global perspective, um, I'm now setting up together with uh, UN Habitat in Nairobi and my colleagues in, in New York at OICT, another um, lab, which is UNITAC. And UNITAC actually does more or less the same that our city science lab has already invented. So we also create those collaborative tools for cities, but this, in this case, more in the global south. And it's interesting, we just opened a call some weeks ago and asked cities and regions in the world to apply for tech support in our lab. And we got a lot of applications really from all continents and I summarized a little bit what they want. Uh, if you ask, ask cities, so how can we help you in regard of tech, what do you need? So they said, we need open data infrastructures. So this is the basic. If a city doesn't have an urban data hub, an urban data management system, then you cannot deliver services for people. Then mapping is very important, especially when you go to informal settlements. Huh? Sometimes we, we don't even know how many people live there. Then it's important to create a map. Then dialogue tools, like I explained it before, uh, the government, they want to speak to the citizens and also the other way around. All democratic governments in the world need those tools now. Then uh, digital city planning tools, of course, scenario planning is very important and monitoring instruments. So how for example, can we monitor the SDGs in the world? Or how can we monitor resilience um, criteria for cities or regions? So this is also quite a big issue. So what are now the new practices of digital database collaboration? How can we build trust? and also a very creative mindset for future city development. So I would like to highlight five practices at the end of col collaboration. Um, I, we, can, we, can, we have those tools, we can implement them, we can apply them because of the wealth, of the tremendous wealth of data. So the first one is collaborative data production. So we all do this. We constantly produce data with our mobile phones. We, we all use these watches now while we are uh, running along the Rhine, probably. Um, so this all produces a lot of data. Then mapping is very important. And I'm a, a big fan of alternative mapping. And I really like to work with artists and designers because our maps are very much from a European perspective. It's a very colonial perspective. So you can map through the eyes of kids or in indigenous people, then you see the world in a complete different manner. Then uh, collaborative designing means that we really design together, we draft together, and you can do it with Lego bricks. This was more like um, old style. It's not old style, it's, it's also very creative, but we can also today do it with a lot of um, other digital tools. Decision making um, or making decisions transparent is very important. We see that a lot of citizens have other ideas of um, mobility organization than the, the classical city planner has. And this is very important to include in our, in our um, ways of looking at the city. And collaborative management, um, the whole thing of how to organize um, a city, the town hall, and so on and so on. So I summarize this again here. Those are the five, uh, from my point of view, most important collaborative practices that we are um, starting now to use. And we are, we are trying also to scale them up to a lot of cities in the world. Yeah, I would like to end with this picture here. I, I like this a lot. It's a graffiti. It's a picture that I took at the High Line in New York. 
and uh, what, are, what are our goals? So our goal is always to create shared responsibility, of course, and ownership based on good collaboration and, like I said at the beginning, trust. And also my work here, of course, is a result of collaboration. I mean, I'm standing here representing a huge community of scientists, our researcher friends at MIT Media Lab, our super great team in Hamburg, and also my, my very, very great teams at the United Nations. And uh, I would like to end this uh, speech with uh, the quote of this woman here. She has this uh, on her T-shirt. She says, I'm not interested in competing with anyone. I hope we will all make it. Thank you very much.